Winter is come in, and with it a threat the likes of which have never been seen before, a threat even we giants fear. I, Emir, king of the giants, must rally the others and form a mighty army and make it south of the wall. If we don't, we will fall. We must get south by any means necessary. Currently the wall is manned by the Night's Watch. Those who have sworn an oath to keep us out forever. They believe we are the threat, but they don't know what lurks to the true north. If we have to kill them to get south, then so be it. We will man the walls ourselves, because even then, we stand a better chance of survival. So for this playthrough, we are going to be doing a giants only playthrough. If I jump into my party quick, you can see we are playing as Emir, king of the giants. We are only going to recruit giants and form a mighty army. The only problem being, giants can only be recruited in one place, in the city of Then. Inside this city, there is another giant that will allow you to recruit them for the small fee of 10,000 gold per giant. That's right, 10,000 gold. So for this playthrough, we need to be careful managing our resources because we can't afford to just throw away any gold. If that's going to be our only source of men, we need to make sure we keep a good stockpile. And as I mentioned in the intro, the goal is to get south of the wall. And to do that, we're probably going to have to defeat the Night's Watch. Whether the playthrough will end once we conquer all of the wall, or maybe we'll set ourselves another goal. Like maybe Winterfell will be the final goal once we have a stronghold that we can call the Home of the Giants. We can end it there. I haven't quite decided yet. All I know is, is step one... A giant only army and step two, we shall take the wall. Whether we side with the free folk or not, I'm not entirely sure of that either. Do we go solo or do we need their help? We are stuck north of the wall with them after all. And I don't think either of us want to be taken out by the undead that lurk these lands. We're going to need to buy some new equipment to begin with. I started off with a dagger and a stone, so I'm going to swap that out for a scythe and some javelins. The reason I've opted for this is because of the intro that we chose. We have a really good throw-in skill, so the javelins will be useful. And also, because of the size of me, I need a large weapon. So, with 96 length and the fact that we can swing it, it might be of more use to us. Because if I use a one-handed weapon, there's a good chance I won't be hitting my enemies. If my sword is all the way up here and my enemies only go up to like my kneecaps, it's not going to go well. <laughs> we have our first quest. A rival gang is moving in at Frostfang Camp, so we're going to put a stop to that. We need to earn as much gold as we can. And we don't have enough troops. Really? You need troops for the rival gang quest? I thought you just joined on your own. Do I just recruit a couple of free folk just to assist with this mission and then just throw them away? I just literally hire them to beat up a gang with me and we'll go from there. I don't think you need many for this mission. There we go. So like I said, we're going to hire the free folk as mercenaries essentially. We're going to beat up this gang to earn some gold and then I'm going to ditch the troops. We could turn our backs on the other gang for one and a half thousand. And that is what we're going to do. Oh, God, they're like ants. I have to just swipe down on everything. Is this what it's like to be a giant? Are we winning? I believe we are. I mean, they have a giant on their side, so if we manage to lose, I would be amazed. We can now abandon the mercenaries that we hired to do the quest, but saying that, only one guy survived anyway. I don't know what happened to the others. I, I guess they're all dead. We have run into the man himself, Tormund Giant's Bane. He wants us to get him three horses and he'll give us a thousand gold. I mean, that's not a bad offer, assuming we can get the horses pretty cheap. 
they are the worst type of horse that they're requesting. So if we take a look, and they don't sell them here. Well, that's a bit awkward. We do have a quest from Mance Raider as well. The king beyond the wall, or should we say the self-proclaimed king beyond the wall. And we're not loyal enough for him to want to give us a mission. Fair enough. We were just traveling through the snow on our way to find some horses for Tormund. And this is the threat I was on about. 207 whites just casually roaming the wastelands. Oh man. We need to get south as quick as possible. We aren't going to survive up here for long. Another 150. Another 120. We are being chased by bandits right now though. If I can hide inside the ca- Oh, I didn't make it to the castle. And there's 118 whites that are siding with the bandits. Well, just for this first battle, normally I would maybe like try and pay my way to get away from them or something. But just for this fight, we're going to battle them just so we can see what the whites look like on the battlefield. It has been a while since I've played this mod, so I don't know if they've changed at all. Lord help us. How is one supposed to take down an army like this? I am a giant, but I'm not that good. I just threw a javelin at one of their heads, and they're not even dying to that. Look at all the headshots, and they don't care. How are you supposed to stop an army like this? We are a giant, so we do tank a lot of hits, but even then, I don't think we'll be able to stop them. I'm not even moving. They're pushing me backwards with their own force. They truly are unstoppable, and then in the middle, you just see the odd bandit that's like sided with them. What's going on, lads? What kind of deal did you make with the undead? We are now a prisoner, but I promise you, we shall get revenge. I don't know when, I don't know how long in the future, but at some point, I will get my revenge on you broken men. I can't say I'll get revenge on the undead, because at this stage, I truly don't know how we're going to stop them. We have encountered another group of ten broken men. They don't have their undead army with them this time, so we're going to have to see how they fare against a mirror in a 10v1. I have six javelins. If we can insta-kill with the javelins, this battle should be pretty easy. But I doubt we're going to be able to. So we're going to weaken them with the javelins and then chop their heads off with the scythe. I am Emir, king of the giants. I do not back down from a battle, especially against a group of bandits like yourselves. We have the javelins at the ready. We're going to thin their numbers. If I can get some kills, that will be great. There we go. And now, off with his head. Okay, this isn't the fastest weapon to swing. The only thing we have going for us right now is the fact that giants are absolute tanks. I'm not too sure what stats this mod gives to giants. It's definitely increased because we have really poor armor. But when I'm getting hit, I'm barely taking any damage. Although that being said, I can't swing at this bloody guy's head. Alright, if I take the lower ground, I can't believe I'm saying that. What warrior wants to take the lower ground? But if I don't, I can't hit this guy properly. There we go. That's one more dead. We're not doing a lot of damage either, to be honest with you. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're doing way more damage than they are to me. Ah, 
And there you go. Emir has taken down this group of bandit scum. Well, we didn't earn a lot of gold from those bandits. I won't lie, I was hoping for a little bit more, but I guess they were just a group of 10 bandits. We do have another quest here to snare the wealthy. I don't know if I've done that quest before, so we might take a look at that. But we have now arrived at Then, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is where you recruit your giants from. So those of you who want to get giants of your own, if you're playing this mod and you're not too sure how, you can travel to the tavern. And then if we go upstairs in the tavern, I believe, there should be a giant somewhere. There he is. Hang on a minute. I'm as big as I can be, and even this giant dwarfs me. Damn. Am I a half giant? What's going on here? Or am I just young? <laughs> Either way, we'll talk to this guy. And then if you say you'll pay whatever the price, he sells you giants for 10,000 gold each. But once you've spoken to him once, he does leave the tavern. But if you go back to the city, you should see him now in the menu. There you go. So every time we want giants, we just come to this city. We just talk to Magmar Tundoweg. And we buy our giants for 10,000 gold apiece. So we can't do this near the wealthy quest because we don't have enough troops. So I'm starting to question the giant only playthrough. What do you guys think? Should we recruit free folk troops and have some of them in the army along with giants? Or shall we actually stick with what I originally set out to do and only have giants? Maybe we could do something like... I don't know, at all times, we can have free folk troops, but they're not allowed to exceed 50% of my army, or they're not allowed to exceed 25% of my army. Maybe we can do something like that to prevent us from just running around with like hundreds of free folk. I've now decided to enter a tournament for this helmet, and it's got a really good head armor rating, and it's a tier 6 helmet. Is it cheating if a giant enters a tournament? They could have given me a bigger weapon though. That that would have been nice. And that's round one over and done with. Just like that. Alright, who stuck us on a horse? This poor thing's back is probably, like, in pain. It's the equivalent of a normal person just riding a dog. How could you do such a thing to the poor thing? We are gonna brace the spear, though. And we missed. Instead, I'm just going to stab this person in the back of the head repeatedly while they don't even react. Our swing speed is so bad. <laughs> Once again, you've stuck me on the back of a horse. Imagine the look of fear in our enemies. If I had an army of hundreds of giants and we were all cavalry. Well, one final battle. I have a two-handed axe, but to be honest with you, it pretty much looks one-handed. And we're done. We've won the tournament. I've got all my gold that I wanted and, well, the helmet is a bonus, I guess. This helmet is really good and has a high armor rating and the fact that it's tier 6 is great. But to be honest with you, for 16,000 gold we could kickstart our giant army and that might be more beneficial for us than having a fancy hat. And besides, I'm a giant with our height. Who's hitting me in the head? I'll be amazed if anyone lands anything on my skull.
So for that reason, we're going to sell it. We're going to get the money. And I'm going to go and buy one giant just because I want to see how much they cost a day. So they only cost 12 gold a day per giant. That That's it. And if we take a look at our party, they're a tier 5 troop. And they can level up to either a giant archer or an elder giant. So we could have giant archers. Is that not just a giant with a ballista? Because <laughs> I mean, he's not using a normal bow at that size. My dude is carrying a portable ballista. Look at those elephant trunks for legs as well. We need to get armor like this so we fit in with our giant brethren. Because if we take a look at us, I swear we're like a half giant. But now that we know they only cost 12 gold a day, we may as well go back to Magma Tundo Weg. Oh man, that's a mouthful. And we may as well get ourselves a second giant. We have once again run into a squad of 10 broken men. But this time I have backup. We're going to have to see how efficient the giants are in battle. Alright giants, we stand as one. There aren't many of our kind remaining in this world. So those of us who are still alive must stand together. We're fighting some bandits as our first test. I can't imagine this will be too difficult. Are you ready? It'll be awkward if I lose them in the first battle. We're going to tell them to charge. It is clobbering time, lads. It is clobbering time. They're trying to poker our kneecaps with spears, but it's not really effective. Being about double the size of your enemy makes headshots with throwing weapons a lot easier. And there you go, just like that, we have taken down the broken men. After getting clobbered by a club like that, they are definitely broken now. One of my giants can level up for 400 gold. I'm not going to actually go through with the upgrade because it will bankrupt us. But if we click on it just to see what it looks like. Hang on a minute. An elder giant has a bow anyway. So what's the purpose of the giant archer? If they both have bows. We'll have to take a look at that. Oh, we can't leave our prisoners behind. That's how we're earning our main bit of wealth at the moment. I will wear the tunic from the humans we just killed. That's right. I'm sure it will fit. <laughs> okay, it makes sense now. So I've just taken a look at the troop tree to see what the difference between an elder giant and a giant archer. So they both have the same equipment. They both have the bow. But if we go back, you can see the Elder Giant has 300 one-handed, 300 two-handed, 300 pole arm, and a bow skill of 50. Whereas the Giant Archer is less proficient in melee, but much more proficient with a bow. They're also slower athletics-wise, which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought the athletic skill would have probably have been the same. But yeah, it makes sense. They have the same equipment, but your giant archer is going to be way better with the bow. Because he is an archer. <laughs> I suppose it gives it away in the name. We have a quest for a bandit hideout. And that bandit hideout just so happens it belongs to the undead. This is not ideal. I don't want to be fighting the undead this early on. But we do kind of need the money. We will head on over to the hideout, possibly, if that undead army doesn't decide to travel south. Could you change your direction, please, guys? Mance Raider with double the units won't even engage the whites in battle. That's how deadly they are. Even though they have almost half the number, they still won't fight them. Damn, man. This is why we need to go south of the wall. 
All right, it is the dead of night. I can't imagine the undead know that we're coming. We may as well charge. We don't have any ranged troops or anything like that. So there's no point sitting back. It is clobbering time, lads. It is clobbering time. Well, that was efficient. Hang on a minute. Was that a white or was that an old man? Did you just cave in the skull of an old man? I can definitely see, though, why the giants are tier 5 troops. They near enough insta-kill anything. It's just landing the killing blow that seems to be the issue. Because of our size, our hits aren't the most accurate. There are only two more remaining and then we have to take down the boss of this camp. My only fear is, who leads the undead? The White Walkers. And I don't think we're in a position with the equipment that we have at the moment to take down White Walkers. We may have to like battle with the giants and hope for the best. Hopefully we're not too outnumbered. Because I'm going to need their assistance to take down the White Walker. I'm not going to be able to take him down with a farmer's weapon. Sometimes you just have to admit when you're outmatched. And we will definitely be outmatched. And now it is time for our duel. Oh god. It is a White... Hang on a minute. There's two White Walkers. Like I said, I don't think we can battle the guy one-on-one -on -one with my farmer's weapons. So we're not going to fight the duel. But the fact that there's two white walkers is worrying. Especially when I just dealt one damage to the guy. We may end up losing the giants in this battle. Come on, lads. Stand as one. Together. United. I need some assistance with these two undead soldiers. If someone could clobber them, please. That would be appreciated. There we go. Hang on a minute. Have the... Hold on a minute. I'm fighting for my life. I'm struggling. I'm on the verge of death. I turn around and my two guys have battered the White Walkers. They've just absolutely clobbered them. Fair enough, lads. Fair enough. I've got to get me one of those clubs, I think. Where'd you get them? I assume it's like a mammoth leg or something. <laughs> But fair play to the lads. They did all the heavy lift in that battle. Both of my giants can level up. So I'll make one of them an elder and one of them an archer. We'll see what's more efficient. If the archer is actually really good, then maybe we'll get more of them. But if it turns out the club is where it's at, the clobbering is what we're best at, then we'll just stick with the elders, I guess. And we also have 8,000 gold. And now that we've upgraded the men, their wages haven't really gone that much higher. They're now 17 gold each. So as far as our weekly wages, well, our daily wages, I keep getting it confused with Warband, which does it weekly. As far as our daily wages go, we shouldn't have too much to worry about, to be honest with you. The giants are absolute tanks. We're not going to be able to afford like 200 giants. So I don't have to worry about having like a massive army. But we are now going to have to run for our life. We do have an army of 69 undead soldiers waiting for us. And I can't imagine they're going to be too happy after we just took down their hideout. Although now that we have taken down their hideout, Mance has decided to cut them down. A second ago, he wouldn't go near them, and now all of a sudden he's decided, yep, let's kill them. 
I don't know what's changed. Maybe the hideout weakened them. <laughs> the loss of their base of operations. They were scattered and confused. And Mans took advantage. We're about to ransom our prisoners. And for a Night King, he's not worth a lot. Someone's willing to pay 500 gold for him. I mean, technically, this guy is supposed to be the baddest enemy on the planet. And some merchant or some ransom broker or wherever, or some slaver, whoever buys these prisoners, has just gone, yeah, I'll give you 500 gold for him. Take it or leave it. <laughs> it's the best I've got. <laughs> so before we dive too deep into this playthrough, I just wanted this video to be a quick introduction into the next playthrough I've decided to do. But I want to give this opportunity to allow you all to give any suggestions or anything you would like to see during this playthrough. So like I said, the original goal is to have a giant's only army and to take the wall. And by take the wall, I literally mean we will take all three castles and Castle Black. So technically four castles, although Castle Black is actually like treated as a town, if you get what I mean. <laughs> But this is an opportunity for you to give any suggestions. Do we have any free folk soldiers in our army? If so, do we keep them at a minimum? Do we just say, like I mentioned earlier, only have 25% of our army can be human or some sort of rule like that? Or do we just stick purely giants? Or is there anything you want us to see? I know I said the goal is the wall, but if we achieve this goal too quickly, is there another goal we should aim for? I'm not entirely sure. For any suggestions you have, feel free to leave a comment. I read all my comments. A lot of the time, I may not reply if it's not needed to. I mean, if you're not asking a question or something, I probably won't reply. But I always read them. So any comment is appreciated. And as always, a big thank you to the Gwaggles members for your continued support. And if you enjoyed the new video, leave a like, subscribe. And until next time, see ya.